by, yep, all, yep, by all yep. means. Um, thank you, Mr. Kusha, for, for being before our committee today. I just wanted to just follow up on, on that strategic priority about protecting and enhancing the environment. Um, the Environment Agency has said that the second biggest cause of water pollution is, is untreated sewage released by water companies. Um, and Ofwat have said that the current levels of storm overflow discharges into rivers cannot continue and the water sector must tackle that. Now, the government has brought in strong measures in the new Environment Act to try and tackle this. But how will Ofwat work with the Environment Agency, with government, with the Office of Environmental Protection, to ensure that these unacceptable discharges actually stop? Yeah, this is a, a really difficult one. Um, my understanding is that the complete elimination of these overflows is very expensive. Um, and that a compromise would be to go back to the way in which these combined sewage overflows were originally designed to be only very exceptional rather than the norm. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what very exceptional means, but I don't. I know it's not going to be every day or every week or every month as it is today. So we've absolutely got to go back to a situation where it is an exception, really exceptional type of stuff. Um, and that is perhaps more affordable. Um, I think that there should be obligations on water companies to record a lot more about what's happening, where it's happening, making that information available to people to say, you know, there have been instances in this river and it's gone on for this long and it's clear by this date. So it's a combination of tackling the worst, going back to um, mitigating all but the, the most extreme weather situations, information, making it publicly available um, and doing the designation of some water areas. River Wharf is one of my favourites because I lived in Otley for a while. Um, you know, looking after certain areas, so cleaning up some rather than the complete elimination, which is almost going to be financially and are, possible. Are you confident that off what the government environment agency will have the teeth to, to hold these, these companies to account? And coming back to my, my colleague's question about how you will measure success in this area, because we all want cleaner rivers and cleaner waterways, I, are you confident that in your role with off what you will have the teeth to really um, hold these companies to account? Yes, I think we do have the teeth, but I'd like to see the translation of the, the Environment Act and whatever's being consulted now to put these things in place. Okay. Let's get a plan, let's get commitments from companies about what you're going to do by what dates, yeah. and for us to satisfy ourselves that it's deliverable, affordable, appropriate, and then once you've got that in place, expect and require organisations to deliver what they've committed to mm -hmm. and that we will take regulatory action if they are falling short on the and, and, and expectations of, of deliverability, you need to measure something. So what about looking at that, how we measure water quality? Uh, currently a lot of it is about chemical status, but actually in rivers should we not also be adding, looking at coliform bacteria as well and, and, and making sure that these waters are safe physiologically, biologically and epidemiologically for people and animals and, and, and flora and fauna, etc. nearby. Um, these are tangible things that we can measure and hold them to account. Is that something that you can get involved in? Yes, we, we can. Well, we, I think you started by observing that water companies are only responsible for a proportion of this. Um, that, I don't know, 45% of the pollution in rivers comes from agricultural sources, 10% come from off flow. So we need to sort of try and measure that entirety of this and then try and figure out where it's coming from and, and what we can do about it. So we can't fix entirely to the water companies, but we can certainly measure it and you know, work with the Environment Agency to make that information available. But the water companies have a significant oh, role. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Okay. absolutely. Okay, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Right, okay. Um, you've got question nine, haven't you? Okay, so we're not doing eight. No, eight's been done. Okay, all right. I, I, okay. Thought, I thought I'd done eight. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, so on to nine then. So um, Ofwat have actually said that several water companies have, um, in their words, over-leveraged their structures um, and that this debt was responsible for declining service. Um, how would you intend to redress this possible imbalance? I think um, Ofwat have done a pretty good job over the last periodic determination, PR19, I think that they have put in place financial controls and uh, gearing mechanisms to, to make sure that companies are less exposed to that environment. I think there are still one or two companies out there which are perhaps overly 
leveraged um, and therefore have got some financial weaknesses. It, I think it's something that we picked up in PR24 that there'll be further controls about that because it does affect performance. It does affect the ability of organisations to step in and fund improvements uh, and to deal with the, 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 the comings and goings of knocks and, and things that happen throughout the course of a periodic review. So I think that, um, like I said, a lot of it has been addressed. I think the comments about off what relate to an earlier period where people were putting in significant amounts of debt, it has come back a little bit. Okay. Okay. And in terms of, of some of the sort of, I guess, the teeth of, of off what we've talked about, the sort of financial remuneration and, and how uh, money uh, generated, whether that is reinvested back into the system. In 2020, some of the highest paid executives in the water industry were paid over £2 million a year. Um, what role do you think Ofwad should play in respect of this level of, of remuneration for executives? Um, I think Ofwad has been engaging with the chairman of the, uh, the water companies to remind them about the appropriateness of pay, particularly in paying bonuses when um, breaches of law have taken place. I think that's right and proper. Uh, we shouldn't get involved in regulating the payment of executives. That is a thing for shareholders. But we should be reminding them all the time that they are accountable mm -hmm. to consumers and to society for what we pay people and not to be paying excessive bonuses when performance has been short of what it needs to be. I guess I'm coming back to the sharpness of your teeth again and you should be reminding them. What does that actually mean in terms of, I, I take on board what you say about remuneration, but what about the, the payment of bonuses? Is there not something that you and your role can do to actually stop that uh, process whereby people are being rewarded for failure and, and we've got rivers having sewage outflows being put into them and shareholders are awarding bonuses and companies awarding bonuses. That is not right, that's not fair in anyone's mind. So what can you, I want to, to see how sharp your teeth are. Um, <laughs> yes, you can remind them, but what does that mean? Um. I don't know whether we've got any powers at the moment to do anything about that. Um, I would be extremely disappointed, this is a slightly different point, extremely disappointed if people are paying bonuses where there have been actual uh, breaks in the law or, or law breakings taking place. Um, if they've operated inside the, the regulatory permits, emissions permits or, or things, um, but they're getting water, um, pollution into the rivers, then that's a more difficult thing. You'll never eliminate it completely, so you're now into, into an area which sort of says how much are you prepared to tolerate? And so um, I would have to look at that. Like okay. That. Can I encourage, I and mean, I guess following up the, the comments of the, the two learned chairs about the Office of Environmental Protection, is that something moving forward that you could liaise with the new chair of the Office of Environmental Protection with the Environment Agency so we get joined up thinking to actually sharpen the teeth and actually put pressure on these people to do the right thing. Is that something that you can take away from this committee and, and give us an assurance you'll try and do I that? I will absolutely do that.